Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun, and I say it's all right. Little darling, it's been a long, cold, lonely winter. Little darling, it's been years since you've been here. Here comes the sun. We thank you, God, for the gifts that winter has given us. Time to skate on ponds, build snowmen with their families, slide down a hill on a toboggan. We thank you for the hibernation of plants and animals that are still preparing for their rebirth. Today, we welcome the transition of longer days and shorter nights, the beginning of the transition into spring. Help us to stay open to the changes that the season will bring. Help our hearts to be ready to receive gifts and to share resources with one another. May this spring be a time of renewal for ourselves and for the world. And may we receive that renewal with gratitude and grace. Hey everybody, welcome to Children's Time today. Today, we're talking about Zacchaeus. Like, he was a cool dude. Well, at least Jesus thought so. He wanted to hang out with Zacchaeus because, well, he was kind of outcasted because of every everybody's thoughts on him and what he did but you know what jesus saw through that and he said you know what i want i want to know more about you so today we're going to be making a tree for zacchaeus out of pipe cleaners and then on the other side we got our play-doh for this week and we're going to be making a a child a cool child uh somebody that like uh, a younger person uh, that maybe try and model them off of someone that you know. Um, and the reason we're doing that is because Jesus loved hanging out with children. Like we're talking about happy Jesus, always around children, teaching as much as he possibly can, all the good times and all the great lessons. So to remember that, we are going to make a child. So let's get going. We're going to start with the child here. So it might look like a ghost. I don't know, but we're going to try. So we got a head. That's a weird head. But you know, all heads are special. Um, we're going to get the hands. Oh, he's coming together. Actually, you know what? We're going to get so kind of a blob, but let's get some legs. Yeah, here we go. Coming together. Coming together. I, I'm going to name my kid uh, uh, Bob. This is Bob. Little Bobby. Hanging out with Jesus. So. There's Bob, maybe like add a little bit of detail. Well, you, you can add some detail. You guys are, are all much better artists than I am. We'll, we'll, make, we'll make Bob sit. Oh, sit, Bob. Cool, Bob. All right, 
Now we're gonna make a tree. And so we're gonna use two pipe cleaners for today. So we're gonna make a trunk that might allow a really cool, a really big tree to be on there. All right, so here's our trunk. And let's get a nice big circle with maybe some like wavy bits. We're gonna go for like an oak, cause you know, oaks are cool. Get a nice big oak tree here. Are oak trees green? I can't remember. Uh, so we're gonna get this, my stump is way too big. Here we go, smaller stump and attach our leaves onto the trunk here. And there is my tree. Whoa, almost, almost fell my tree. And there is my tree. So we're gonna line up our tree and our child up with our journey through Lent as well, going back and reminiscing about our times making the well and the bucket, the person and the vessel to sail on, as well as the angel and the beast. We'll see you next Sunday. Reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 9 to 13. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds. Yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. reading from Luke 18, verses 15 to 17. People were bringing even infants to him that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they sternly ordered them not to do it. But Jesus called for them and said, Let the little children come to me, and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And reading from Luke 19, verse 1 to 6. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was 
but on account of the crowd he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. How are you coping? I've been asking you that for the last several weeks and I haven't given you any instructions on what to do with that question. And today I'm gonna to invite you to call a friend after the service or maybe even pause the service right now and talk to the people in your house, the people in the circle around you and ask them, how are you coping? What's helping you cope with these days? With the worry about the vaccinations and when it will be your turn, with the worry of COVID or just the other challenges that are coming alongside of this. Why don't you take a moment, either after the service or right now, to share with somebody else what's helping you cope. We've been on a sermon series through Lent talking about coping strategies or the coping tools, if you will, that Jesus used in order to deal with the challenges that he faced in life. And today I wanted to talk about a coping strategy that we don't often make reference to because most of us think of Jesus as a serious guy. We think of Jesus as a very hardworking, serious guy who did a lot of preaching and teaching and healing, who went out to feed the sick or feed the hungry and to, and to heal the sick. And so there was a lot of service orientation and serious business that Jesus was about. But there is another side of Jesus that I want to talk about today. And probably the best way I can describe it is from this picture. Some of you may remember this picture. I know I saw it when I was a young, a young girl hanging in my Sunday school room in my church. It was drawn by a man named Willis Wheatley in 1973 for the United Church's curriculum. And it became known as the Laughing Jesus. And I believe it was one of the only pictures or one of the earliest pictures depicting Jesus laughing. And I remember myself looking at this picture and thinking, Jesus laughing? I don't know. Did Jesus laugh? Which, of course, as the early church told us, Jesus was known and determined to be fully human. So, of course, he laughed. We don't see direct scriptures that say, and Jesus laughed, in the way that we see the scripture and read the scripture, and Jesus wept. But throughout the Gospels, we have many moments where you, you can see that Jesus balanced the stress of life with moments of finding joy, moments of being spontaneous, moments of relaxing, moments of laughing. And in the story we read today, you see a couple of those examples. The, the first story is a story of Jesus with, with children, the children surrounding Jesus. And I know it seems as though they just appeared, but I like to imagine that Jesus went and saw them and maybe probably they were playing and Jesus put himself in their presence because he wanted to be infused with the joy of seeing children playing. And he took the child and he placed the child on his lap and he used their playful, spontaneous spirit as a teaching example for the disciples. The other scripture that we read today is a great story that is often a favorite of children. The story of Zacchaeus, who is a wee little man. A wee little man was he, as the song says. And Zacchaeus ends up climbing up a tree and looking out over the crowd to see if he can find Jesus because like me, Zacchaeus was vertically challenged. And of course, Jesus comes over and you can almost hear when you read this scripture that the humor in his voice, Zacchaeus, what are you doing up there? What are you doing up there? Come down, I'm coming to your house for dinner tonight. I don't know what Jesus had planned for that day, but my guess is he hadn't planned on dinner at Zacchaeus's house. But in that moment, he diverted and decided to have a moment of spontaneity and have a nice, fun dinner with this man. 
We know that Jesus did these kind of things, that he relaxed and he did playful things and that he would share meals with others and that he would do these kind of things because he gets criticized by going to weddings and going to parties and being able to relax and to have fun and be playful. Now, it makes you wonder, though, like how... How is that central to the gospel? Isn't what's central to the gospel that we feed the hungry, that we care for the sick and the imprisoned and the people who are pushed to the edges of society? It absolutely is the gospel. But the gospel is also, as the book of Ecclesiastes reminds us, that we find the joy in life. And God wants us to balance our life with service and with joy, with opportunities to help and care for others and opportunities of creativity and spontaneity. And it is in that balance that we cope most effectively with the challenges that life brings our way. This has been a very stressful time for many people. My friend has this great illustration that she she gives when we do workshops on stress. And she says that, you know, our life is like a cup of water. And you get stress in your life when you're, something goes wrong at work or you lose your job. You get stress in your life when you have a fight with your partner or one of your children. You get stress in your life when um, you get, have to be relocated. You get stress in your life when you have something beyond your control that seems to just all of a sudden consume your life. You get stress in your life when you have some health problems, be they physical or mental health problems. So all of these things add stress to our life and they are like rocks going into the cup and to the point that the cup can overflow. And the answer is to find ways in which you can relieve the stress by moments of joy, moments of connection, moments of beauty, moments of grace, all the things that help us relieve stress, help us to feel balanced so that the stresses and strains of living doesn't overflow the cup of our emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being. Now, I know that in these times, there have not been as many opportunities that we used to have. We used to be able to call our friend up and say, hey, I'm coming over on a Friday night to have dinner with you, and those sort of things aren't available anymore. But it is also true that we can create and find these moments of joy, these moments of spontaneity, and that it is essential for us to do so if we're going to live in a balanced way in life. I had a great moment of spontaneity and joy the other day. I went over to Sarah and Cheryl's farm where there are baby goats and baby lambs. If you haven't gotten there, make sure you try to take a trip with your children because it's an outdoor activity that's, that's really safe. But the moment of spontaneity is that as my daughter and I were looking in the pen where there were a couple of goats, there was a goose and Cheryl had gotten into the pen and there apparently geese, I don't, I'm not a farmer so I don't know these things, but I learned it. Apparently what happens with geese is they protect one particular animal or person and that goose was on a mission to protect the goat at the back of the pen and she or he kept nipping, nipping, nipping at Cheryl's snow pants. <laughs> And this went on, and I just had to laugh. It looked so funny. And then Cheryl grabbed the goose by the beak and said, really, who do you think is going to win here? <laughs> My daughter and I just burst out laughing. It was a lovely moment of spontaneous joy, and it relieved the stress of what was happening for me anyways that day. There is a man who also was moved by this picture. And I read an article that he wrote. He's a, a minister out in BC. And I read an article that he wrote about this laughing Christ image. 
And he talked about how he went back to that image that he had seen a long time ago when he went through a period of depression that got so deep that he even wondered whether he should, should still be here on earth anymore. And as he got through that time, he wrote this, I discovered that one of the things that had happened to me is that I had forgotten how to laugh, how to find joy. I started taking life much too seriously. And for me, laughing is a sign of health, good physical health, good emotional health, and good spiritual health. When you laugh and you seek out joy and spontaneity, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have pain and grief. These will always be part of life. But laughing and finding the joy in life is a choice which says, despite the sorrow that comes our way, life is also filled with wonder and beauty and grace. And so I want you to go into the week that is to come to seek out the moments of joy and spontaneity, to look for and pray to the laughing Christ who will help you cope with the challenges that you face. May it be so with all of us, friends. Thanks be to God. Amen. Today's spiritual practice is called the examine. For this practice, get into a comfortable position in which you can be still and be aware of the presence of God. You can keep your eyes open or you can gently shut them as we often do when we're praying. Once you are in your comfortable position, place your hand on your heart and ask Jesus or God as you understand God to bring to your heart the moment of today or the last few days for which you're most grateful. Remember what was said or done in that moment that made it so special. Breathe in the gratitude you felt and receive the gift of that moment. Now ask God to bring to your heart the moment of today or from the last few days for which you're least grateful. When were you least able to give and receive love? Just be with whatever you feel without trying to change it or fix it. You may wish to take deep breaths and let God's love fill you just as you are. Now bring to mind something that you hope for in the week to come. Name this hope to God and ask for anything that you may need in order to be open to how God may reveal this or how God may surprise you with something you did not to expect to receive. And now let's join in the prayer Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Thank you.
Amen. Let us go into the world with hearts filled with love, with faces that are ready to don a smile and greet the people that we need, with hand outstretched to those who need our care and our forgiveness, and with feet ready to walk in the steps of the laughing Christ, the one who loves us and shares with us our capacity to balance life with love, laughter, service, and grace. Go in peace and enjoy. Amen.